Often the spirits that come through a Ouija board pretend to be harmless, even benevolent. But don't be fooled. More times than not, they're up to no good. Be sure to drop by every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content. And if you like these stories and want to hear more, click or tap on the end screen or find the link to my playlist in the pinned comment below. The great gods of YouTube really love it when you binge watch. They're funny that way. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, 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 together. I used a Ouija board as a kid. I'd always had an interest in the supernatural, so my older sister gave me one for Christmas. When I first started using it, nothing really happened, so I thought maybe it just didn't work. But one day my best friend came over, and we were determined to get that board to work. We turned off all the lights and put blankets on the windows. I don't know why, but that time, it worked. The planchette started slowly moving around the board. We both thought the other one was pushing it, though. So we took turns asking the board questions that the other person wouldn't know the answer to, like my grandma's birthday or my mother's middle name. After getting correct answers to both, we realized there may be something to this. After that, whenever my best friend came over, we'd get out the Ouija board and ask questions like, how many guys have crushes on us? Just stupid, meaningless things. It seemed to go much faster and get more accurate every time we used it. There also seemed to be different entities speaking to us at different times. There was a difficult one that refused to spell out anything in the English language. There was a friendly one who talked to us easily. And then there was a spirit that called himself Brandon. I never learned the specifics on who or what he was or how he came to be there, but he was the one that came through the most often. Once I had the guts to ask him how he died, the response was, never alive. Okay. I had certain friends that he didn't like, and he would spell out curse words directed towards them when they played the Ouija board with me. On at least two occasions, the friends that he didn't like ended up being backstabbers later on. I guess playing so often and having him, in my mind, warn me about bad friends gave me a false sense of security that this was all harmless. Fast forward to my high school years. I was having a sleepover at my house with one of the friends that Brandon didn't like, Deanna. We woke up kind of early the next morning to find the house empty. Neither my mom nor my brother were around. Now, this wasn't a totally weird thing, because my brother was often gone, and my mom always had errands to run. It was a pretty windy day, so when we woke up, the power was out and the phone was dead. This was before cell phones, so we had no way of contacting my mother to see where she was or ask her what was going on. The only thing working was the battery-operated clock. We decided to play with the Ouija board since there was nothing else to do with the electricity off. We asked maybe five to ten questions like, Why is the power off? Answer, the weather. Where did my mom go? Answer, the store. What time will she be back? Now this response was oddly specific. It spelled out, two, three, four. Then Deanna asked a question about herself, and the board spelled out B-I-T-C-H. I stuck up for my friend, and I told Brandon that we weren't going to play anymore if he was going to start that again. So I put the board away. As soon as I put the board away, the back door swung open, but nobody walked in. I thought my mom was back, so I told Deanna, let's go help her bring in the groceries. I happened to glance over at the clock, and the exact time was 2.34 p.m. Weird, but cool. I told Deanna, look, it's the exact time the board said. We both kind of smiled and went outside. But when we got out there, we realized there was no car. In fact, there was nobody out there at all. I thought maybe the wind blew the door open, so I closed it and locked the deadbolt. About five minutes later, 
the back door swung open again. Now it was starting to make me feel a little bit creeped out, but I convinced myself that I must not have closed the door all the way or fully turned the lock. So I had Deanna come back there with me to watch me shut and lock the door to make sure I did it right this time. But less than 30 seconds later, it happened again. Now I was scared. There was also a screen door, and both the back door and the screen door were swinging back and forth violently. Then the wind started blowing the papers around that were on the kitchen counter. It was like a scene straight out of The Exorcist. We looked at one another, then ran into the next room to hide under a blanket. It was chaotic and scary, and it seemed to last forever. My family is not very religious, but I've always believed in God, so I started praying the Our Father out loud. After maybe three or four times of saying it, the wind stopped, the door shut, and it stayed shut this time. Deanna and I didn't speak or move for a good two or three minutes, and when we finally did start to move, we tried to find a way to contact my mom and get her home. That's the scariest thing that ever happened to me and there's no real explanation for any of it. I found out later that my mom was never at the store. She took on an extra shift at work, and my brother was at his friend's house. I really do believe that there's an entity in that house to this very day. It always felt creepy in there after that. The two biggest things that lead me to believe that this really was paranormal is that I locked that door twice with a deadbolt, yet it kept opening and the fact that something happened at precisely 2.34 p.m., as predicted. My mom didn't come home, but something did. My girlfriend told me about her experience with a Ouija board back in high school in 1986. Her friend Johnny had cystic fibrosis and was in the hospital. She and her friend Shelly would go to visit him a few times a week to keep his spirits up. One night after a visit, they went back to Shelly's and decided to play with the Ouija board. A spirit came through that seemed to know a lot about them that it really shouldn't have known. So after asking some banal questions about boys and other things that teenage girls ask, my girlfriend decided to ask about Johnny and his condition. The board spelled out, 24 June 1987, Johnny worry no more. Then the planchette went to goodbye. My girlfriend and Shelly were so convinced that this board was telling them the date that he was going to recover, that they actually wrote it down, put it in a sealed envelope, and were planning on giving it to him the following year to celebrate. Well, the next year on June 24th, it turned out that indeed Johnny did not need to worry any longer about his condition, because it was the day he died. One night at college, we were all hanging out at a friend's dorm room, and we decided to play the Ouija board. There were a few of them that had never used it before and were quite skeptical. It was around 11 p.m. and communication with the board was going rather well. Gary, one of the skeptics, kept making fun of the whole thing. But we convinced him to sit down on the floor with us and give it a try. The first question he asked was, Is this all a bunch of bull? The planchette moved over to no. So Gary said, Fine. Prove it's real. The moment he said that, the lights in the room began to flicker, and the fire alarm went off. This freaked us all out. We had to vacate the building to follow fire alarm procedures. After about 20 minutes, the campus security said it was a false alarm and let us all back inside the dorm. When we got back to our friend's room, the Ouija board was gone. None of us took it with us, and the door had been locked. We never saw that Ouija board again. A 
About two or three years ago, my friends were playing Ouija board at my house. One of them had brought it with them. At first, I just watched while the others used it. Then, I decided to join in. We asked the board if there was a spirit present, and it said yes. Then we asked the name. But instead of answering, it just pointed to random letters and numbers that made no sense. Annoyed, I asked again, this time more forcefully. And it spelled out B-I-T-C-H. Then the C word. You know, a four-letter word beginning with C and ending in T, if you get my meaning. I freaked out and left the room after that. It was either a really mean ghost or something other than a spirit that came through. I'll probably never use a Ouija board again after that. Probably. I was staying at a hotel with some friends in Ontario for a chess tournament. Yeah, geeky, I know. One night, somebody took out a Ouija board, and we all decided to play. We asked a few questions that I can't remember the answers to, but I'll never forget the answer to one particular question. We asked if any one of us was going to die soon. I know, strange thing to ask. But it spelled out my friend's name and gave a date that was 12 months in the future. And a year later, my friend did die of cancer. And he only found out about the diagnosis six months before he died. So none of us could have known that at the time we were playing with the Ouija board. To this day, I'm still curious about Ouija boards and how it knew that my friend was going to die. But I'll be damned if I ever touch one of them again. When my brother and I were very little, my mom took out a Ouija board one day and asked if we wanted to play. A spirit did come through, and at first it was fun. We were just asking stupid questions, until my mom said, let's get serious and really try to contact someone. Now here is where it gets a little weird. Mom's friend George had recently gone missing. He'd been gone for about a month and nobody knew where he was. When we asked the name of the spirit we were talking to, the board spelled out George's name. We then asked if it was the same George that went missing, and the pointer went over to yes. My mom became visibly upset, and she asked him where he was. It spelled out, in a lake. At that point we stopped because we were all getting very upset. Mom tried to make a joke of it for our sake, but she was visibly shaken. About two weeks later, they found his body. He'd fallen off a bridge into the lake below and drowned. It was kind of hidden away, so they didn't find his body until then. I only played the Ouija board one time. I was 17 years old and at a friend's house with a bunch of other teenagers. One guy said something like, This is all fake. I need proof. He didn't even get to finish the word proof when the lights in the entire house went out. If that was just a coincidence, it's one of the oddest ones I've ever seen. No one else was in the house, and the fuse box was hidden away in the back of a closet. My friend had to call his dad to come home and fix it. He said he had never seen that happen before that the entire circuit was tripped at the same time. Not long after my ex-boyfriend lost his friend in a plane crash, we tried to contact her with a Ouija board. Something claiming to be his friend came through, saying that she was scared and alone and desperate for communication. But I just knew this thing was not his friend. So I insisted that we stop immediately because I could feel a dark presence in the corner of the room. As soon as I said the word stop, the planchette started moving on its own, 
going all over the board so fast it couldn't even spell anything. It was absolutely terrifying. I put the board away in my room and refused to use it again that night. I felt exhausted after that, completely drained, and I had to lie down for a nap. A half hour later, I woke up, and in my mind's eye, I saw that same dark presence standing in the corner of my room. As soon as I saw it, it rushed towards me. I opened my mouth and yelled for my boyfriend to get it off of me. I could actually feel it aggressively trying to possess me. I ran from the house screaming and shaking horribly, vowing never to use a Ouija board again. But the point became moot because one day it just disappeared out of my room, completely vanished. I never saw it again, and to this day, I have no idea what happened to it. My worst experiences with the Ouija board are pertaining to Zozo. I know it's considered to be BS by many, but it isn't. In 1992, my friend got a Ouija board for Christmas. We were both eight years old. I'd never played with a Ouija board before, so we sat down with the board between us when something that we thought was called Oz Oz came through. At first it was fine. We were just asking dumb questions like, will my mom let us stay up late tonight? But then it turned dark. It said it was going to do terrible things to us, things that I won't mention here because they're that dark. And then it said it wanted to kill us both. It really freaked us out, so we stopped playing and said goodbye. This was 1992, and we were naive children. There was no internet back then, and our town had no libraries that carried books on the occult, so we had no way of looking up any information. But the name Oz Oz always stuck with us. I went on assuming that my friend was the one pushing the planchette, despite the fact that the things that were said were very out of character for her. She was just a normal eight-year-old girl. How could she know to say such awful things? Fast forward to 2004. I was once again playing the Ouija board, this time with my husband's friend and his wife. The first person to come through was the friend's mother. He thought it was all BS, so he decided to test the board with a question that nobody in the room knew but him. He said, If you're really my mom, what was your favorite drink? The planchette spelled out, Grape Soda. His mother had passed away when he was just 10 years old, so none of us knew her, let alone her favorite drink. So he was convinced enough to carry on a rather lengthy conversation. He got pretty emotional. It was actually kind of sweet. But then, the board turned dark. It started spelling out words like afraid, and it got really creepy, saying it was going to kill his wife. Then, Oz Oz was spelled out, and the planchette started moving around erratically, all on its own. We got scared and said goodbye. I'd never done any research about Zozo, and I'm pretty sure they didn't know about it either. It was a good year or so after that incident before I found out that Zozo was the real name and that this was something that a lot of people encounter using the Ouija board. So, unbeknownst to me, I had twice been contacted by a demon. There is never a dull moment with the Ouija board around. They're always up to something. Have you had an interesting supernatural experience, Ouija board or otherwise? If so, write it up and send it to me for possible inclusion in a future video. My email address is at the end of every video and always listed in the description below. Now click on the end screen so you can hear more stories like this and stay scared until we meet again, my friends.